today we're transforming this thrift store vase into this aged stone beauty. Hello guys. Okay, so we have this thrift store vase that cost me $5 and it's looking pretty old and beaten. Look at the rusted area here from the finish that just has been chipping off. It's kind of just really in bad shape um, and it's really not that attractive. So I am going to convert this into hopefully something that looks like beautiful aged stone. What I'm going to use first is this product, which I love, it's called Salt Wash. And I'm going to use Antique Tin by Bear, which I have made into chalk paint. A brief pause in the video because after the fact, I realized that the angle of the camera was not exactly always on the project. So I'm sorry about that. I didn't want to delete this video altogether because it is a really cool project. You will get the gist of it as I'm talking you through and you will see the technique in certain points of the video. So just hang in there guys and thank you for watching. And I've used it on several renovations, but I really like this deep, rich gray. That is going to be the under color of our stone look. You want to create contrast, so you want to use a darker color of paint underneath your light or vice versa. So to make the salt wash paint, I'm going to pour in a little bit of paint. So I think the recipe says you should do equal parts. I don't know if this is equal parts, but I'm gonna start with a lower amount. And I'm going to mix it all together. And what this salt wash product does is it makes the paint, when you apply it, apply very textured onto the surface. I used this product to create a stone accent wall in our kitchen and it came out just fabulous. It looks like a really beautiful Italian aged wall. So this starts making the mixture really coarse, the paint really coarse. And you can do it as much or as little as you want. So now we are going to just apply by painting this on. Just apply it onto your surface. Now, if you want to leave some of this orangey color or whatever color you have on your original vase exposed, that's really a good way to create another level of dimension, another under color. So I often leave some of the under color exposed. So the more layers, the more colors you have when creating an aged or vintage look, the better. And with this product, you can also kind of dab it up and down. Doing so will really give you even a more coarse appearance. This is a, a, a blotchy, messy look, but don't worry, it's all going to come together. As I usually talk about in all my paint layering techniques, it gets really ugly before it gets pretty. But you are going to see how magical this is going to come together in the end. And I'm really liking the pattern, even though I don't like it, this like zigzaggy pattern on the original aesthetic of the vase, I really think it'll work wonders for our final look. So I think I'm almost finished here with my first coat of the gray and I'm really liking how this looks already. It's looking really cool and really weathered and I like how the gray looks with the orange under parts, but I'm really just trying to apply it on thick in some parts to just make sure it dries with some texture to it because that texture it's going to give us that stone aesthetic. If it dries on too flat, it's just going to look painted and we're trying to avoid that. But that I really like. Okay, so now the gray paint has dried and it actually looks really magnificent. I've been, debate, I've been debating whether to leave it like this or go ahead and add a lighter color on top. I think I'm going to just continue with my weathered white paint on top to give it um, just a more soft French cottage look. This is the weathered white. I have put maybe about a quarter cup of paint in here. I really don't need a lot. 
but I am going to thicken it with more salt wash this time so that it becomes a little bit more coarse. So this is about half a scooper and maybe just a tiny bit more. You can play with it to see how thick you want it. You'll notice how thick it is by how clumpy it gets. And I'm just going to dab it up and down. You see all those peaks right there? That's what we want. We want to create that elevation and texture. Those peaks, if they are dripping a little bit, you can come over them and just dab them again and it'll get a little bit more defined, a little bit more uh, pointy, which is what we want. We're trying to create just a rougher, coarser look on the outside and leave some of the under colors exposed. Leave some of your gray and your brown because all those colors will work together to create some a layered look and dimension. When these peaks dry, you can leave them like that or you can sand them down for an even more rustic aesthetic. It's really your choice. See how some are dripping right here? So I'm just going to hit them. To make them not drip, you would have to add more salt wash, but it doesn't matter. This is a really informal rustic finish full of imperfections, which is part of the look we're going for. It's just a lot of character. I'm going to go down here and do it at the base too. And just continue to hit this wherever I want some coverage. But I really like this combination. I really like how it's all coming together. And I'm glad I continued with the white because it really does add even more layers more depth to this face. It's really starting to change before my eyes and that's what I love about this technique because it's so easy and you'll just start to really transform it and change what was before into something unrecognizable. That's why on my YouTube channel and on my blog you see me doing this paint layering technique a lot because it doesn't come out the same anytime. It always comes out different. So fun to work with this product. I love what it does to paint. It is so easy to just mix it in there and then it really makes your chalk paint amazing. And I have a recipe for making chalk paint that I love to use with any latex paint I buy at Home Depot because it makes my paint go a really, really long way and I can pick really any color I like. So I'm going to continue working on this, guys, and I will be back to show you the finished product. You melt the ice behind my stone cold eyes. I turn the ashes, but only just sometimes inhale your smoke but you still 